Hi, I'm Ed Sperling. I'm the Editor-in-Chief of Semiconductor Engineering. I'm over at Marvell with Daniel Webb, who's going to talk today about the new wireless standard 802.11ax. So Daniel, what sort of problems are you starting to see in the wireless area? Well, we're starting to see more users coming on, like gamers and collaborators that are looking for real-time low latency applications. They're looking to be able to upload a lot of information to the cloud. and. Uh, it's really starting to put a strain on networks. So in addition to that, we're seeing a lot more users coming into a network. So, for instance, the GSMA uh, connected home report said by the year 2020, there'll be 50 connected devices in the home uh, that can range anywhere from you know, your simple laptop, for those that may still use a laptop, all the way to smart devices like a smart watch or, or phone. One of the big problems that we've all been facing with uh, wireless is that there, this, the spectrum for bandwidth is limited here, right? So we need to get more out of what we have. That, that's exactly right, Ed. There's, it's really, uh, there's a limited resource in, in frequency, so we need to find a ba better way to use the, the limited resource we have, and 802.11ax addresses that with two key features, um, multi-user MIMO and OFDMA. Why don't you draw this out for us? Sure. So what are we looking at here? So here's a typical network. This is often referred to as single user, so that's single user transactions at a time. And what we have is an AP or access point, and it's sending data in the downlink direction to each station. And here I've shown just a simple example of uh, station one through station eight. And each, the AP will send data down to each one of those users, so data one, and then as part of the protocol, the station has to acknowledge it received that data, so the access point knows it, it, the data was a successful transmission and then it'll move on to the next data that it needs to send. And so by the time it gets to data uh, eight, for the station eight, and it gets to act back, there's a significant amount of time, and so we're tying up that precious resource for a longer period of time. And this sounds incredibly inefficient. How do we improve this? Again, with OFDMA, we can start to uh, put these channels, these data packets together in a single frequency um, and be able to do a single transmission and then receive multiple acts back from the clients. So what does this mean in terms of one user versus multiple users on a network? I mean, we understand there, there are multiple people that want to use a network, but what happens? With multiple people on a network, there's a lot of congestion that, that can occur. So again, this, this is a method for being able to help clean up some of that congestion and, and have a more efficient network. Let me give you an example. Um, say your morning commute. Uh, there's you and 15 of your friends are trying to drive down the road and, and get to a certain uh, spot in time, um, and there's a lot of congestion. If, if your friends and you can get into the same vehicle and drive down the road, you get into the high occupancy vehicle lane, and then you're able to get to your destination quicker. Similar kind of concept here. So what are we really trying to accomplish here? Is this a, a matter of there's dead spots? Is it overhead? What are we looking at? Yes, Ed, it's, it's overhead. It's, it's the, the overhead of the protocol. Uh, often, you know, as we demonstrated earlier, or showed earlier, the, each user has to send an act back before the access point can send another uh, datagram down to the, to the next user. So that can be inefficient and a longer wait time. So as you add more users, each user's got to wait a longer period of time before it's their turn. With this, with OFDMA, that you can group more users together in a, in a single frequency and you're able to um, get the data to them quicker. Does this work off of existing equipment? Do you need to change out some equipment? What happens there? Yeah, this, th this uh, new standard, uh, 802.11ax, will require an equipment upgrade uh, in the infrastructure and on the client side in order to take, care of, uh, take advantage of this technology. And so inside of enterprises, for example, they have, what, at this point, what, AC perhaps? Yes, it, most, a lot of enterprises are adopting 11ac wave 2. And uh, in the home, you're, it's, a, it's slowly being adopted as well for home networks, gateways, and uh, that, you know, set-top boxes. And we're going to have a lot more uh, devices that are, that are taking advantage of these networks in all these places, right? right? Yes. There's going to be a lot more use of collaborative. And for instance, in the office, uh, a lot more video collaboration uh, where you know, lag time and stuff can often cause a meeting to be more, less efficient. And in the home, you know, there's a great example could be um, multiple applications trying to upload to the cloud. Does it matter if the, there's more data running over those networks? Is that one of the issues, or is it just the number of users that are trying to access it? 
It, it's a combination of both, but I think with 802.11ax, it's trying to address the multiple users, uh, the, de the increased density of users. Wi-Fi is becoming the way to connect to the internet. So with Wi-Fi, there's, there's more and more users giving into to smaller spaces. So what are we looking at here? So I just wanted to show a summary of the OFDMA discussion we were having where, you know, you remember in the other diagram, it was the AP was sending data to each individual user and he was, the AP was waiting on an act before sending to the next user. So this is just showing how, what the AP would do is it would send data down through uh, to each of the eight clients at the same time and then get acts back from those clients. So you get a better appreciation for the efficiency. Okay, and so you talked about uh, OFDMA. You also mentioned um, multi-user MIMO. What is that? Yeah, multi-user MIMO. Um, so MIMO is multiple input, multiple output. Uh, that's talking about the number of spatial streams going into a channel. Um, so that essentially multi-user MIMO is, is spatial multiplexing. So this actually can increase the capacity of your network. And again, like OFDMA, it can help in these high density situations to improve the overall throughput of your network. So if you remember our single user example. So does this mean people are actually going to get see increased speeds on their corporate networks or does it just mean it's going to handle things better for what they already have and, and an increase in data? Well, the standard actually does bring uh, uh, higher rates. Uh, it does bring on 1024 qualm. So you will see some uh, the peak speed increase. More importantly, it allows the user to have a uh, to get more bandwidth more often. Daniel Webb, thanks for a great explanation of a really complex technology. And thank you very much.